Bruce Lawn. Julio, how much of this was shot on location and how much of this was uh, shot in a studio? Because I was doing some of the research behind it and some of it seems like it was shot on like a stage, water stage type of situation. But some of it was also done on location in, in Cabo or so it appeared. I've been to Cabo before. So in terms of the making of this, how 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 difficult was this to, to piece together? It's what felt like a high production high high value high elite type of movie obviously the real story set is based on the tournament in Cabo San Lucas that happens every year in October right. and so what we did but it was more cost effective and they had a, a big water tank we wanted to use in the Dominican Republic and so what we did was we shot I went with uh, my brother and my wife and when we shot uh, all the all the drone footage of the tournament got the big white expanses of the of the, the rocks the stone arch and all the marina and all the boats taking off and all that and then we took that footage and we we made we matched it. We shot on a water tank in the Dominican Republic. A combination of shooting on a water tank, which is essentially a giant uh, infinity pool on the beach. Uh, and so there's the boats just floating in that. And so we, we would get most of this movie is set shot there. Uh, there's we shot for about a day out in the open ocean, but that's just miserable. You know, everybody's vomiting and you, know, you can't light anything, and it's just, it's awful. So it was like, so we, we we just we went out there just for the boat. Whenever we need the boat to move a little bit, we get went out there and get a couple shots, and then just we just went straight back to the tank because it was the open ocean is no joke, especially with little kids when they little once the kids start puking, man, your day's pretty much done. So. How involved was uh, Omar and the the like the the original characters? Because sometimes when you're making stuff based on a story, you you take some creative license in the process. And how much of it was the the folks involved in telling the story, a part of the story? How much of it was uh, you guys taking some creative license and kind of sticking to the big ideas, but but you know dramatizing it a bit? Yeah, you know, we went uh, when I went to Cabo. We we met Omar. We did a long interview with him. He gave us his whole story and. Uh, and so I, I I would say that the all the general facts of what happened are true. All that the storm did, you know, without giving away the film, but the storm did destroy their uh, it, it messed up the orphanage. They they were they didn't know what they were going to do for money uh, because the storm did cause uh, them to be able to get into the tournament. Like that actually changed the, they changed the rules that year so they could get into the tournament. And uh, ultimately, you know, it, the, the, all the fact the facts of the things played out. Uh, the embellishment stuff is more like my, the goal, you know, the goal when you're telling a true story is you, you, you listen to what they tell you how they, and you want to recreate how it felt to them. And so sometimes, you know, from an outside perspective, something feels more dramatic when you're experiencing it than maybe it looks from the outside. So then you, you just heighten the drama to make it feel more like what it felt to, the, to them. Um, and, uh, and so that, so I would say, you know, and funny enough, this is, I would say one of the, maybe one of the biggest, adjustments is that you know i think we we gave omar some more doubt as he was about the what the outcome of the tournament because to, to kind of give him an arc and so he could have a struggle and we could it could be sort of an exploration of, uh, of even more faith omar's an extremely faithful person uh and and so in, in some ways we actually we actually had to give a little bit more doubt to to make it to have that dramatic arc about how this is actually come across because he, he's an amazing guy as you can imagine somebody who's devoted their life to orphans uh is well, you can guess how, how faithful he actually is. So, Julio, do you um, think that film could, it, it, films like this will drive donors to organizations like this? I kind of mentioned that to Lecrae earlier. Uh, but but do you think films like this, because there's a, you know, I looked up the orphanage and then it makes me inspired to give to other orphanages, that folks that are just consuming this, watching this on Netflix, that, that media can move the needle in funding some of these places. Cause like we wouldn't have known this place existed or places like this necessarily exist in other parts of the world. And so do you think that that could be a, a, an actual way to move the needle for people in countries like America that are prosperous in a lot of ways can contribute to other parts of the world? Yeah, I think, I think it absolutely, you know, the, the, it can, it can draw attention. This can draw attention to that specific orphanage, uh, Casa God, for sure. And, and, and that can, I'm sure that's going to happen. Uh, I think as a, that, that's kind of speaking more than probably to what you're asking is that I think that, I think that a, this sort of story for me, the, the importance of a story like this is, is humanizing kids that are in those situations in those places. And so, so just generally, the next time you know if somebody who doesn't have any real exposure to that that world, the next time they hear about you know kids just stuck stuck in the border or anything like that, they have a face and emotional connection mm. to that to that whole 
kind of group situation that I, I think can then compel people to use, follow their hearts and make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, aside from this specific, uh, aside from this specific work. Obviously that's not, what, that wasn't, uh, for me, like the, the, anytime you're telling a story that, that especially if it's inspiring, the, the, the main goal is of the craft is to make the audience connect and feel empathy with the people that are watching. So if you can make people connect, people in, if you make people in Dallas, uh, affluent people in Dallas connect with the poor kid in Cabo San Lucas, and that's uh, only, I think only positive things can come out of that. I, yeah, I think this is kind of the antidote to a lot of what we've been seeing in terms of this, this kind of war on empathy that we see across society right now, where, you know, people just kind of shut off because it's not in their direct line of sight. But when you see a film like this and you see the heart behind it, I think it, I think it could definitely move the needle. And, and, and I, and I would hope that we would see more movies like this on such a broad scale of Netflix. And what was it like for you to work with Netflix in this whole process of putting together something uh, that has some fairly strong tones religiously and as well as, is, you know the 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 empathy side of things well netflix is netflix has been great all along and, and they they are specifically the, the team that we've been working with is great um in that in this space already um and i and i think that you know i think our my goal is similar i think is, is it, it seems like that what reach's goal is as well is to is to try to present a, a certain you know a more positive message but at the same level of craft that the mainstream or even the, the secular uh, the secular media is also presenting these things, so they, I, I think we have a responsibility. Sometimes, sometimes message films of all kinds, messages of all whether full far, far left, far right, religious, atheism. It, once you once you once people let set out to send a message, a lot of times they neglect the craft of what they're trying to do. And I don't think we I think we have a responsibility to be as good as you know uh, go back four hundred years and. The, the most talented artists on the planet were their their sculptures were still hold up to this day and the paintings on their ceilings still hold up to this day because they knew their craft and i think that we uh as artists need to be as good as we need to be as good as anyone else and not expect audiences just to turn out because it's a nice movie or it's not offensive because i think that sometimes we've uh people films in, in this genre have sometimes gotten the benefit of just not being offensive just not <laughs> having bad words just not you know just not having nudity and i think that to really to really elevate this genre to another level uh, you know i might i have to do the same thing that reach has been doing which is uh it, i need to it can't that can't just be enough like can't i can't be getting sympathy views i need to be as compelling uh, as the secular counterparts and and so that's something that i'm working on and you know getting better so. yeah well, when, when media movies are are driven strictly by ideology the create creative side can suffer. And so I think that's, you know, watching what, what Gavi's done, Lecrae's done few, uh, this film specifically, I think it, it delivers creatively on an elite level. And then the messaging is, I think, way more receptible when the quality is there. So kudos to you guys, man. Killer job on the, on the, on the film, killer job on a soundtrack, uh, very, very inspiring top to bottom. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pumped. I'm pumped to see where, where this all goes and, and how big it's received hopefully on the Netflix platform. So Congratulations, Julio. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Joshua the King came down and bore it off. Yeah. Conversations front of the fireplace. All of my mistakes out of wire race. Wanna operate at a higher pace. Birth pains causing the body to dilate. On a first name basis with the word.